Welcome back to Arsmix, guys, and today we're working again on our Sonoma V8 swap. We're not actually going to be working on the truck today. We're going to be working on the LT1 350 out of his Camaro Z28 uh, that's going to go in this bad boy. So uh, we're actually going to head over to my dad's house. He likes to call himself Master Mike. And <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and start pulling that motor apart because we're going to put a, a new camshaft in. We're actually getting the camshaft put in today. Uh, but it's going to be the LT4 hot cam kit. Links in the description below. Uh, we're going to get that installed. It's going to you're going to see every piece of it. I'm going to do some uh, voiceovering just to kind of explain everything that we do. You're not going to miss a beat. So make sure you stay uh, stay tuned and follow through. If you're especially if you're doing something, there's not really a lot of videos on how to do a cam swap in LT1. So uh, this will be the most uh, thorough video that you'll find probably on YouTube. So. If you like the video, please subscribe. Consider subscribing for other videos like this. Uh, you can follow this build and uh, turn on that post notification so you don't miss anything. Comment below, see if you missed anything. I uh, love seeing comments. Uh, follow us over on Instagram, at average underscore mic underscore channel. But for now, let's go ahead over and uh, get to work. I'm here with uh, Master Mike here. We're going to get started on the new, or I'm going to start on the S10 uh, engine LT1 teardown. We're going to put a new LT4 hot cam kit in it, and uh, that way we can get it over and start working on the, the truck. So, uh, first we're going to take tear everything down, see what we need, and then uh, we'll be back with, with new parts and putting everything back together. This first part of this assembly, we're going to speed through a little bit. I'm taking off the alternator and the power steering pump. My dad's working on the top end. He's taking off the intake manifold bolts, uh, as well as cleaning up anything up top to uh, kind of get everything out of our way to uh, eventually remove the intake and the valve covers. I'm starting to work on the water pump. Uh, we got the bolts off. It seems a little hard to get off, so I put the front cover up, but that is not needed. I was just looking to see if there's any bolts, other bolts holding it on. Uh, we, we ended up just between the gaskets and the, the drive gear uh, that goes from the motor into the pump. Uh, it was just a little harder to get off, so it's just a matter of smacking it a little bit with a hammer and, and yanking on it, it, it came loose. So we are going to pull this motor off to the side and kind of blow off the top before we take anything off. We, we worked on, uh, my dad worked on taking the uh, valve cover bolts out. Uh, once all the dirt is and debris is removed with the air compressor, uh, we can then pull the valve covers off as well as the intake. You want to make sure you blow off any excess dirt so that none of that stuff drops in your engine when you take these pieces off. I'm going to start working on the hub assembly here. Uh, these hubs are not keyed to the crankshaft. Uh, there, there's not a slot for it. However, on the crankshaft, there is a slot in case, I, I guess in other applications where they use this crankshaft, or uh, you can purchase an uh, aftermarket hub uh, that also has a key slot for it so that you can key these to the crankshaft. It's really only for high horsepower applications. You don't, you don't need the key, and we don't plan to use it here. Here I am taking off the OptiSpark, uh, pretty simple, a couple bolts, I'll turn off. Also, because the hub is not keyed to the crankshaft, you cannot use that as a reference to determine where the engine is, and this engine needs to be at uh, number six, top dead center, in order to have everything lined up to replace the uh, camshaft. Uh, you'll see later in the video, we, we adjust that uh, with with some flash washers and the hub bolt to get this motor where it needs to be to replace the camshaft. 
Uh, here we are taking off the front cover. Uh, in order to get that front cover off, you're going to have to drop the oil pan just slightly in the front. So you have to loosen up all the most of the oil pan bolts just to get that front oil pan to, to dip down enough to get the, um, the front cover off of the engine. You wouldn't necessarily have to drain the oil out of the motor. We did in this situation because we wanted to uh, flip the motor sideways on the engine stand. We had that luxury here. Also, if this engine is in the car, you're gonna have to do other things uh, that we don't have to do, like take the radiator fan assembly out, radiator, uh, the AC condenser, although you can move it out of the way without discharging, uh, you still have to move it out of the way. The camshaft coming out will pass all those devices and uh, they'll, they'll be in the way if they're still there. There are also some things in the top end like fuel lines uh, you would have to disconnect, uh, EGR pumps, the intake, stuff like that that we didn't have to remove because we already removed it because the engine is out of the car. Uh, in order to take this hub off, we have to ground down a, a because it slips over the whole thing. We had to grind grind down a, a bolt that was smaller than this um, pulley bolt and or the balancer bolt, and that way it didn't mess up the threads, and we were still able to put pressure on it to use the puller to pull it off. Uh, another thing that we read that we had to loosen up this oil pan to get the cover off. But other than that, we're doing pretty good. We're gonna tally up what we need for next round. We'll start, and we'll pull the camshaft out, replace it. I have new valves, or a new roller rockers, new springs, new new rods, I believe. And we're thinking about getting new lifters too. We'll see. All right. So here in the video is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, we ended up buying some flat washers um, big enough there so we can stack them up. I think we stacked the 10 of them up, put that uh, balancer bolt back in so we can turn the motor to uh, the number six top dead center. Uh, number six top dead center will make the crankshaft dot or indicator on the crankshaft uh, at, uh, at 12 o'clock and then the camshaft rocket indicator will be at six o'clock so it'll be lined up uh, right on top of each other so and that's how you know uh, exactly where uh, the motor is so when you take that camshaft out put it back in you can um, have everything lined up and you don't mess anything up so you do want to make sure you do that So now we have it lined up, we're gonna pull the, start pulling the rockers off the top of the head. Uh, we were, if you're gonna reuse these, you're gonna to have to keep them, or it's best practice to keep them uh, marked or somehow laid out so that you know exactly which valve it came off of. Even though we have new uh, roller rockers to install, uh, you never know what you might run into 
So we are keeping track of them anyway, even though these are probably gonna go uh, in the trash. All right, so now we have all those off, we can go ahead and pull all the push rods out. Here we're gonna pull out the lifter retainer spider bracket. These are three half inch bolts. There is a notch on the bracket that is facing the front of the motor. You wanna make sure that notch is facing the motor when we put this back on. Now that that spider is out, we can work on pulling the lifter retainers off, just setting them aside, and then also pulling the lifters out. And again, the lifters need to be marked or arranged so you, when you put them back, they go back to where they uh, originated from, unless you are replacing these lifters. Now you can also remove the bolt that holds the oil drive assembly in place. Uh, that's just one bolt pops right out. Pulled off the camshaft sprocket. Now we just uh, and pulled off the camshaft retainer bracket. Uh, it's two, two T30 torque bits. To pull that retainer off. And now that that's off, we actually purchased some four inch, uh, I think they were five sixteenths inch, 18 four inch long bolts. And uh, we use those as a handle to uh, pull the old crankshaft out put, and also use it to put the new crankshaft in. Here we are putting the new crankshaft in. Uh, I did purchase um, some comp cam uh, engine lube as opposed to any camshaft oil. You're going to want to, you're going to want to lube or oil these uh, lobes and the uh, journals before you put the cam in. Uh, we chose the, the engine lube because uh, it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit pastier, and that is recommended if you are not planning to have this motor running uh, soon. Obviously any oil mostly come off and drop into the pan rather than the uh, lube, which is a little more pastier, will stay on there until we get this motor running. Uh, we're we're going to be a little bit, we still have to figure out wiring and what have you. So uh, this motor is not going to be running for a little bit longer. So that's why we went with the lube. But now that we have the can shift in, we're going to go ahead and put that retainer bracket back in with the two T30 bolts. Um, we're also using some red Loctite on these bolts just so uh, they won't they won't work themselves out. Those T30 torque bolts are torqued down to 105 inch pounds.
Now they're tight, we're going to put our oil drive assembly back in. The bottom of the oil drive assembly has a, a slot in it that has to line up with the uh, oil pump that's in the, the bottom of the motor. So when, before you drop that in, just double check that the slot is lined up, how uh, it, it looks if you look down into that hole, uh, just so that it, it won't seat all the way down if you don't do that. And you should be able to get that completely seated uh, by hand, and then you can torque it down. The oil pump drive half inch bolt, you can torque that down to 13 foot pounds. Now it's time for the lifters to go back in again, putting them back in the positions they were prior to removal. This motor is fairly clean. When I when we purchased uh, the car that this motor was in, this motor was uh, redone. Uh, it's still very, very new, very clean. Uh, whoever did it did a pretty good job. Uh, all this stuff is fairly new. Yeah, even the uh, time chain and sprocket set looked new, so we're not replacing that either. Uh, the valves looked very good, uh, very little, if any, wear on them, so every, all of those are being reused. Uh, obviously, a higher engine, a higher mileage engine, you're going to want to replace all that. All right, once all the lifters are in, you can put the retainers, slide those back on, and then put the lifter retainer spider back on with the three half-inch bolts. Uh, again, making sure that that notch that's in the spider is facing the front of the motor. Those three half-inch bolts for the lifter guide retainer spider, uh, you can torque this down at 18 foot-pounds. here we're just going to put the cam shaft sprocket back on and chain. Uh, we're not going to torque these down yet because this will most likely come back off. We still, like we had said before, uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the springs. It came with the LT4 hot cam kit. So we're going to replace the springs, the roller rockers, uh, and push rods uh, at, at that time. So make sure you turn on your post notifications and uh, if you want to catch that video, it should be coming out soon. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. We got the cam uh, pulled out, old cam pulled out, new cam put in. Uh, we even got um, some of that put back together. We are, we do need some tools, some supplies to do the springs. So that'll be another video. We'll put the springs, roller rockers, push rods, all that stuff back on, button everything back up. Uh, I believe I am going to be painting that motor once it's all buttoned back up. And then uh, it'll be over here slamming into this truck and see how it goes so make sure you stay tuned make sure you subscribe turn on your post notifications uh, so that when another video is out you, you you get a little bell and uh, you won't miss anything so i do have other projects c2hx rebuild which we're uh, about ready to start ramping up that or continuing that project again uh, some of my old builds uh, we did a kitchen remodel you know stuff everything so, so go check us out uh, again, subscribe, follow us on, over at Instagram. It's at average underscore Mike underscore channel. And uh, until next time, I'll see you then. Later.